Morning you guys, it's Karen and I have got a Decium empties for you. So you can see there is there's a couple of Niod, one Hylamide and then a few items from The Ordinary Skincare. It feels like a while since I've talked about Decium but I wanted to show you that I am still using and loving a lot of their products. Let me start with my one Hylamide product which I absolutely adore. This is the Hylamide C25. So it is the ethylated ascorbic acid. So it's an ascorbic acid derivative but it's the closest thing to ascorbic acid and I just adore this and I think after this video I'm going to go on and order some more of this because what I currently have, the only vitamin C I have at the moment is the 100% ascorbic acid from The Ordinary and I've got a funny feeling that's not going to work for me um, and I've also got the Sea Deep um, from the Garden of Wisdom which is in, I think it's in Squalane and that is another derivative. So actually let me talk about this as well, this is the Vitamin C Suspension 23% from The Ordinary. Do you remember I ordered it again to see if it would still have the same effect, if it would still feel gritty, if it would still sting my skin, and it did. But remember I said I'd found a way to use it, which was mixing it with the hyaluronic acid. It was the Hadalaba one I was using actually. And that definitely stopped the stinging. But I did notice that even with that, my skin just in general felt more irritated and there was more little sort of bumps coming up on my skin. And so I think I've more or less concluded that ascorbic acid so the pure vitamin C just doesn't work for my skin. Um, or certainly not in these forms actually, because the, the Skin Devil one always worked fine. I think that's ascorbic acid and the Timeless one worked pretty well. So I guess I could, I could use one of those, but um, certainly this 23% one doesn't work. And like I said, I've got a feeling that 100% ascorbic acid that no matter what I mix it with, it will just irritate my skin. Um, I do like the Ordinary Vitamin C 30% in silicone, but as I always said using it, I just wasn't sure how well it would penetrate with being in silicone, um, if at all. But I have noticed recently that not only my, my open visible pores come back here, um, they've, I've now got visible pores here. I was horrified. I was looking in the mirror and I was like, oh my goodness, all here at the top of my nose are visible pores and I've never had that before. And I think that's because I haven't been using a vitamin C for quite a while. Like this has been sitting in my empties for quite a while. Um, the only one I've been using is the C Deep from Garden of Wisdom, which is in Squalane. So I think I need a bit of a stronger vitamin C back in my routine. Um, that's I know that a lot of people say they get brightening and a lot of people are using it for pigmentation and but I always found it worked on my pores. Um, so I don't know whether I'll go for the vitamin C 30% from The Ordinary or this or I might even use both um, because with when I was using the 30% in silicone I just used it sort of in my T-zone and I could I could do that again. So this is an absolute winner, I love this. It's a little bit warming on the skin. It feels oily, but it's not, but then it sort of disappears. And I just feel like this is a real luxury to use. So I'm gonna order another one of those today, I think. Um, and But I will not repurchase the 23%. I'm kind of done with that and probably will be done with the ascorbic acid powder. I have used up my EUK. Um, this is another one of those products that I just enjoy. It's not something, I can't say that I notice any long-term benefits from using this. I don't think that there's necessary the research backing it up as an ingredient. There's a tiny little bit left there um, so you can see what it's like. And this is another one that feels a little bit warming but I just love using this in the morning when I'm not using vitamin C because you can't use this with acids. So this is something that I would put on underneath an SPF. So my cellar water, this SPF. But what I tend to do is I will either be using this or the resveratrol and ferulic acid. So now that I've used this up, I'll buy a resveratrol and ferulic acid, use that, and then when I've used that up, I'll probably go and buy another one of these because I feel like they're fairly similar things. They're both antioxidants. They both feel warming on the skin. Um, the only disadvantage to this one is, like I said, you can't use it with um, vitamin C, whereas you can with the res resveratrol and ferulic acid. So I do enjoy that, and I would definitely repurchase it again. I'd repurchase it, not repurchase it again. I'd purchase it again, or I'd repurchase it get your English correct. <laughs> okay, next is the lactic acid from The Ordinary. This is a long time favorite. This is the 10% one. You can get it in 5% and 10% and I, I just love this stuff. So I've started on my new bottle already. I don't use it every single night, but this is something that when I use it, my skin feels smoother. Um, it gets rid of the little dry patches and I was tempted to, to try it on this area of, of visible pores that I've found but what I'm actually trying out at the moment is the Garden of Wisdom Azelaic Acid uh, 
um, I'm trying that out on this sort of T-zone area. They're um, not, I think some some people would say salicylic acid would be better, because, but they're not blocked pores. You know, I've done like click, deep cleansing masks and all that kind of thing. I think it's just aging that's, that's the less, the lack of elasticity and that's why I'm getting visible pores. Um, but this is something that I feel like will always be in my routine. I just love this. It, I love the smell of it. It's got a weird sort of celery smell. I love how it feels. It doesn't sting, but it, it just feels really, really smooth. It doesn't feel actually like you're using an acid at all. You know, it just, it feels really soothing. Um, and I feel like my skin gets more moisture as well because it's got hyaluronic acid in it, but also lactic acid is something that draws moisture to your skin. So love that. Final product from The Ordinary is another fairly long time love and it's the borage oil you can see i print my little labels to put them on because the bottles still look the same and they've never changed the writing to be a bit more distinctive which i wish they would um, but i love their oils i love the borage oil i love the sea buckthorn oil but it's just so staining that sea buckthorn one um i like the bee oil but not as much as i like that my top two would be the borage oil and the sea buckthorn oil and if i had to choose one it'd probably be this borage oil just because it is not as staining as the other one you know well it's not staining at all this one is there any left at all this is just a nice clear one but it's this is what i thought the marula oil would be like i don't like their marula oil but this one is really great for dry skin really feels nourishing but it doesn't feel the marula oil just made my skin feel like ew, like i've put chip fat on it or something it just made it feel really kind of like I was blocking up my skin I don't know it's hard to, to describe but you can see that that kind of disappears but it feels really really rich going on um, and I have been using oils on my hands as well because my hands have been so dry and that helps I just oh, that is just lovely absolutely love the borage oil and remember when I did the review of this there was actually quite a lot of research behind borage oil for different things this is a definite repurchase i may well buy it now i may not i'll see what else i put in my basket um okay the two items left are from niod and both items i absolutely adore the first one is the survival 30 so you guys know i love this i've put the little um pump bottle top on that you get let's see if there's any left there is a tiny bit left i tried to to leave a little bit um so that i can you know show you when i'm talking about it so that is there SPF 30 it's a mineral sunscreen it's just this is the most is it the most or one of the most lightweight mineral sunscreens that I have found and it's got the most perfect tint you know it's this is just you can see that it's very liquidy so it's just so lightweight and doesn't feel at all greasy and what I've always said about this and I had forgotten until I reused this recently and I noticed it again was that when I first started using it, I, I thought that my foundations looked better on top of it. And that does seem to be the case. I don't know why. I don't know whether this base colour does something. I, I, I Because there's hardly any colour there, as you can see. I don't know what it is, but whenever I use this, I feel like my foundation sits better on top of it. Um, and yeah, I just, I love that. Love the Survival 30. The final one to show you is the MMHC. So the Multimolecular Hyaluronic Complex by Niod. Again, I love this. And the interesting thing is I don't like hyaluronic acid as an ingredient on its own. I have tried so many different brands and they just feel like water, a lot of them. And, and not only do they just feel like water, they don't feel nice to use. I've, I haven't really found one that has ever made my skin feel more hydrated, which is exactly what they're meant to do. And I just haven't found that to be the case except with this one. Um, this one actually feels nice to use and my skin does always feel just a little bit more plump and it feels like it's sort of drawn water to it. And so it's worth the money for that reason. I just love it. I absolutely love it and would highly recommend it. Like I said, I just don't generally get on with hyaluronic acid. In fact, I might try, I'm gonna order another bottle of this today and I might try um, some of the vitamin C powder in with this. Actually, another good, another interesting thing to try it in, and I think there's probably enough for me to try it one day, would be to put some vitamin C in with this Survival 30. I don't often mix vitamin C in with sunscreen because I always feel like it will water it down. With it, with it being a powder, it would be interesting to see how it how it went on with that. Um, that's everything that I have used up from Desiem, and 
like I said, I'm going to repurchase quite a few of those today. So there will probably be a DCM haul in the future because I might buy a few other things from their website as well. So um, I hope that you enjoyed that. Like I said, I wanted you to, to know that I'm still using and enjoying um, a lot of the DCM products. Let me know what your favourites are. My makeup today, I will leave all the details in the description. Thank you so much for watching and I'll speak to you again soon.